Welcome back to SA Today. Now, as part of our continued special focus on food safety, let's expand more on this discussion by welcoming two lovely ladies, Matlo Sitati from the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa, alongside Namla Skweya, who is a food safety as well as security practitioner. Ladies, great having you on the show today. Welcome to both of you. So, Matlo, let's start with you. Uh, in the first, very, very quickly understanding the role of the Consumer Goods Council in ensuring food is actually safe for consumption in South Africa. Thank you and good afternoon to the viewers. Uh, the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa is also GS1 South Africa. We are a member organization in, the, in terms of the GS1 side. People know us for the barcode that you get issued when you want to identify your product. And this is very critical because when you see a barcode in South Africa, the 600 number, that is what you are issued to identify yourself. So that's the most critical thing that enables your identification in terms of you selling in the stores and also in terms of recall, when there's problems, we can identify who's the person that is the owner of the product. So in the main outside of the industry association role, the CGCC plays um, also the GS1 role in terms of identification of product. Thank you for that. Namla, I suppose you've been busier than usual in the recent weeks and days with consumers probably needing additional information about food safety related matters. So what are some of your frequently asked questions and who is asking for this info? And good afternoon, good afternoon to your listeners and your um, uh, watching people. Thank you for having me. Um, Sisi, there has been really an, an uptick in terms of inquiries on food safety, especially around those um, that have uh, ha impacted uh, children's health. And it's been really around in my space in terms of the families, it's been in, in terms of the communities that we live in, but also in the public. But the questions are really coming from the, par from the parents. Parents asking, you know, how do we identify unsafe snacks for our children? So many parents are really seeking guidance on how to check for indicators, you know, like expiry dates, suspicious uh, packaging and all specific, all specific ingredients. Mm -hmm. All right, Matlo, we understand that, uh, of course, the Commission has just launched an interesting app that anyone can use to actually track information provided by the supplier on their barcodes. Tell us, how does this work? It's very simple. We've made it very simple. It's just, it just takes, I've got a book here, which I like. I, I can't show it. It's a government online support, no pun intended. And when you scan the barcode, I was hoping to find information about our beautiful Bafedile and ex employee of government. And it, it says you can't confirm where it's coming from. So that's what the power of the barcode does. It's a simple app. It's my CGCSA app. You download it and a scan to verify the barcode gives you perspective as to who's the owner of the product and what is the product. And what we are urging all suppliers is that food um, images on the on the on 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 the GDSN, which we call it the Global Data Synchronization Network. This is where all manufacturers pull their data and we store them, and it's it's encrypted in the barcode. The barcode is carrying a lot of information. The expiry dates that we're talking about, the batch numbers that we are talking about, can be encrypted in the barcode, and that is what you give to the consumer as the power when they scan the barcode. They can verify. Uh, environmental health practitioners are using it. Uh, the SAPS is using it in their in their rates and also in their inspection to be the spark in terms of ensuring that what you are talking to is it at the right place where it's supposed to be manufactured? Is that place the global location number um, allocated to that specific manufacturer? So we're truly excited to have that uh, availed to the consumers. So it's power in your hands. Uh, the MyCBCSA app. Very, very great, in interesting, and a great information there. Thank you so much, Mantlo. Uh, Namsa, I know you spoke about parents uh, being the ones that have been in contact with you in the recent weeks seeking guidance. I keep asking this question because I'm yet to get a satisfactory answer in terms of how the biggest victims that, of course, have been children so far, can read, interpret, as well as comprehend the information on labels. Allegations are that some of these informal traders actually do tamper uh, with the labels. So you really cannot tell just by looking at something whether it is safe or not to consume. So who actually assists those kids? 
You're absolutely right. It is a complex issue that goes beyond what children alone can manage. You know, for young children, food safety labels, even if accurate, can be a challenging thing to read and understand. And the problem is really worsened if labels are tempered with uh, or uh, and, uh, are tempered with and then there is no recourse for them. So what I would like, what I would maybe suggest is to say from a parental guidance and education, parents and caregivers, they do play a, cru a crucial role in terms of ongoing education initiatives that raise an awarenesses and even communities, even school, uh, school involvement uh, uh, becomes really a, a essential in this case, they can help educate the children on safe choices, even from a young age, by incorporating the basic food safety lessons. It is quite a difficult one in this case because of the reading of the label. And also in the case that we have currently, we don't know exactly, you couldn't have known that the product is actually um, is, is contaminated. So I think the work begins obviously for us as well, taking that responsibility as a as, as government and as and all uh, role players in making sure that the Food, the, the value or the food value chain is understood and everybody and, and is taking uh, full responsibility for manufacturing these goods. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, maybe just expand on that, Namsha. I mean, what are some of the telltale signs that one can obviously look for uh, should they, uh, before they actually consume any food product? Yeah. We always say that the basic things that you can do as a consumer is firstly use your senses, your five senses of smell, taste, you know, touching or the feel of the product. Those would generally give give you, uh, you know, an indication in terms of the safety of that product or how well or, or how healthy the product is for you to be able to consume it. So using your senses is number one. But in the case where you've got a chemical that is you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't see it, it becomes a tricky situation. It becomes really complex. And this is where then you expect that the manufacturers of the product are actually taking the full responsibility and at, at taking into consideration all the safety pre uh, uh, measures in terms of manufacturing the products. Mm, absolutely, mm. absolutely great information there. Matlo, at this stage, is the council the first point of reporting in cases of suspected food safety issues and how do they do this? Well, I wouldn't say we are the first point because we do not have the mandate to speedily come and enforce and close down a store if needed. Mm -hmm. The municipal offices uh, with the environmental cattle practitioners would be our first point call for the community to get, community to, get to, 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 to report to. We are a conduit between government who's got the mandate to go and put the law in place and enforce and the public and the sector. So the data that we collect, we will then issue to law enforcement and say, this is what we are picking up. This is what um, the consumers are reporting. So that is the role that we play in, in, in ensuring that the voice of the consumer is heard. And also what we pick up in the system in terms of the value chain, we also report to, to the law enforcement to, to do justice. But point of call is our local um, environmental practitioner. Ladies, thank you so much uh, for your valuable input on this topic. Thank you so much. We are out of time. That is my close daddy from uh, the Consumer Goods Council alongside Nam Tlaskweya, a food safety practitioner, giving us some tips uh, as, of course, we continue looking and focusing at uh, food safety related issues.